Imagine wanting to go on a relaxing summer vacation flying from Los Angeles to the Bahamas, but then you're trying to book a flight ticket. Right off the bat, there aren't any large booking sites available. The ones that do exist are small, patchy, and unreliable. As there is no direct flight, you have to book your ticket separately on airlines' websites. LA Air is the only operator in California, and it only flies to Dallas, and it isn't allowed in random states' airspaces, so the trip is incredibly long and inconvenient. From Dallas, you have Texas Air flying to Chicago, Minneapolis, and New York only, with transfer times of 2 minutes, 5 minutes, and 12 hours, respectively. From Chicago, you could take a plane to Jacksonville with Illinois Air, from where Florida Air has a direct connection with the Bahamas, but it costs 8 thousand dollars and the transit times are too short. From Minneapolis there is a propeller plane to Miami but the trip takes 20 hours and costs five thousand dollars and then from Miami you still need to take a boat. From New York there is a plane to Philadelphia, from there there is a plane to Washington and then a plane to Charlotte and then a plane to Tampa where after eight hours of waiting you'll be able to get on the Tampa Bahamas plane. Tickets aren't available online from Philadelphia, from then on you have to get them in person at each airport. Time spent six hours, tabs open 30, mental health dangerously low. Chosen method of transportation, screw that, you're driving. On that beautiful, straight, six-lane highway linking Los Angeles directly to the Bahamas. And this is what it very often feels like to travel by European International Rail. In 2021, the European Year of Rail, a promotional train, the Connecting Europe Express, traveled across Europe to popularize rail travel, but what was intended as a nice and easy PR stunt became an absolute disaster. The train crossed 26 national borders, almost all of which resulted in a complete stop. Getting through the European rail network required three different trains pulled by 55 different locomotives. That's because the European International Rail Network is a complete mess. Hang on a second, isn't Europe supposed to have an excellent rail system? Fast and convenient trains running to almost every town in city? Yes, that is indeed the case. Domestically. But as soon as you try to traverse a border, you find yourself in a unique, heartburn-inducing hellscape called European International Rail, where attempting to book a ticket can actually cause mental health issues. And so in this video, we'll be touching on the following points. The problems of International Rail, the ones responsible for said problems, what is being done to fix this mess, and what more could be done. Before the climate catastrophe hits us, and we'll have a 2050 refugee crisis times 50, triggering the largest far-right resurgence in the history of- No, get your hands off me! So as I've said, while domestic train travel in Europe is generally great, traveling across state borders by train can actually erode your mental well-being. But thankfully, Fabulous is an app that can help you avoid just that. The sponsor of today's video, Fabulous is your digital coach, a happiness trainer so to speak. It's the number one self-care app out there to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. Fabulous really helped me maintain my mental health after traveling by train from Amsterdam to Prague. Oh boy. Based on behavioral science, it helps you develop great, healthy habits and routines, backed up by science, for a healthier, more productive and fulfilling lifestyle. The app will help you create your own rituals, the small steps that lead to big changes. The two main ways to use the app are habit tracking and dedicated programs. In habit tracking, you can choose from 100 plus recommended habits or you can create your own. Fabulous then lets you build these habits with gentle reminders and content based on behavioral science. Dedicated programs help you achieve your well-being goals over the course of several weeks. The new habits you pick up can be added to your daily routine if you so choose. The app even sends you nice letters, weekly reviews, and monthly self-care checklists. And how nice is that? With the premium version, you can build and improve an unlimited number of habits in your routines and you have access to all programs and exercises. Start building your ideal daily routine. The first 500 people who click the link will get 25% off their Fabulous subscription. Thank you for checking out Fabulous. Ads like this help support what I do. And now, back to the video. Not long ago, I traveled from Germany to Amsterdam. The trip there was relatively uneventful. I traveled to Hanover, from where I took a direct train to Amsterdam Central. Neighboring countries generally have their cross-border rail travel figured out. Somewhat. The problem started on the way back, where I made the terrible mistake of trying to go from Amsterdam to Prague. Ooh, only 17 hours and 7 changes for 99.90. I ended up taking the night jet, the sleeper version of the rail jet operated by the Austrian railways. As I was going to Prague, I booked my ticket through the Czech Railways app, Muivlak, got on the train and... So I'm on the night jet from Amsterdam them to Germany and uh, well it's a sleeper train but uh, I got my place reserved in a regular ass compartment car because I reserved through the Czech Railways application which cannot differentiate between beds and seats and there's this I don't know if you can hear it imagine sleeping next to a hair dryer I had to get off in Regensburg at 5.05 to catch the train to Prague at 6.15. If I miss it, the next connection is in 2 hours with one change or in 4 hours without a change. You have 1 hour and 10 minutes to catch your connection. Your train is now 2 hours late. Your ticket is only valid for the 6.15 train, so if you miss it, you have to buy a new ticket. Sleep well on a regular seat for 9 hours. I wrote a complaint to the Czech Railways, I talked to the manager if you will, to which I got the following response. We are sorry, but Muiblock cannot sell bad. You can use our eShop or at the stations. Well, guess that's my fault. Should 
should have educated myself on the particularities of the train ticket app before using it to buy a train ticket. In the end, luckily the train did manage to work down its delay and I got my connection to Prague, traveling on the Munich Prague mainline, part of the Backbone European Rail Network, which is an unelectrified single track in the shadow of the D5 highway going parallel. <sighs> So the problems of European International Rail. It's under investment into infrastructure, right? Not only, I'm afraid. In fact, that's the least of our worries. Remember the Connecting Europe Express having had to pull three different sets with 55 different locomotives? We call that interoperability, which is a magic word in railway circles. In order for interoperability to happen, you need four main things to be in order. Track gauge, electrification system, train control system, and the end user experience. In terms of track gauge, we're doing rather well. Most of everything is 1435mm standard gauge. Ireland isn't a problem because it's an island, Spain's sprawling high-speed network is standard gauge, for the Baltics there's the Rea Baltica project underway linking them with standard gauge, Finland is far away anyway, Belarus and Russia are no-go zones, and Moldova and Ukraine will likely make an effort to convert their network to standard gauge after the Russian invasion. So hey, that's neat, one out of four done. But then... Shit. This is an approximate map of electrification systems in Europe. Your electric train has to be fitted for a given system or it cannot go there. The standard is 25kV 50Hz AC by the way, marked green. Germany, Switzerland and Austria use a different system though, forming a 15kV AC island in the middle of the continent. We also have a bunch of 3kV DC countries and the Netherlands exotic 1.5kV DC, also present in the south of France. Meaning, if you want to run a train across Europe, you're potentially looking at 4 system trains to do so, and those trains are very rare, and expensive, and someone should hurry and tell Deutsche Bahn because those brand new hypermodern ICE4 high speed trains are 15 kV AC only. The third issue is train control systems. Yeah, if you want to run a train from one country to the other, your train has to have the proper hardware. What you're looking at right now is a map of the dozens of different systems currently operating in Europe. And, well, let's return to this later. Here's a great example of what these issues mean in practice. Here we have a local train line running between Rumburg and Jechin in the Czech Republic going through Germany for about half the way. So how does this line operate? First off, only half of it is electrified between Jechin and Bad Schandau. Second, the double track also ends with the electrification, continuing on from Bad Schandau a single track. Third, the electrified section is 15 kV AC on the German side and 3 kV DC on the Czech side. The Czech side will be converted to 25 kV AC in the coming years and the German side will be converted a few years before the sun turns into a supernova. Fourth, train control systems. Between Rumburg and the border there is Mirel, on the German side there is PZB90, and from the border till Jechin I have no idea, maybe also PZB. But the border till Jechin section will also be converted to standard ERTMS soon, that's European Rail Traffic Management System, so yeah. As a result of this clusterfuck, you can't run a proper train service with electric multiple units. The line has to be served with small Siemens D0 diesel multiple units running at 2 hour intervals, making this more of a tourist line than an actual competitive mass transit system. So if you ever wondered why European cross-border train services are bad. That's the idea. There are also other, more obscure barriers, such as an operator's rolling stock having to get approval to run on another country's rails. But now there is a common European framework for that, so if you abide by those rules you can automatically run on every rail network in Europe, but national operators are of course in no rush to implement it. And the first operator to receive European certification was none other than the Hungarian Railways, by the way, for their new domestically manufactured IC Plus passenger cars. But aside from all the hardware issues, there is the fourth one, what I call user experience. This is an issue just as severe as the previous ones, with a key difference. This would actually be easy to fix, like very easy and rather cheap, and it could be done very quickly, and it would make rail far more competitive with airplanes and cars in an instant. I'm talking about a unified European train ticketing service, a web page uniting every single line of every rail operator, just like flight booking websites. So uh, can we do it? No. Alright then. Turns out most national rail operators keep most of their ticketing data closed, meaning no third-party website can access them. If you ever wondered why there aren't any websites where you can book train tickets from anywhere to anywhere, like with airplanes, this is why. Airlines are obligated to publish their ticketing data to third parties, national train operators in Europe aren't. As written in this Investigate Europe article, the European Parliament actually voted overwhelmingly for open ticketing data in October 2018, only to be denied by the Council of Ministers comprised of member state governments. National rail operators refuse to give up their precious little turfs, and that's why you have to spend two hours booking an international train ticket on four different websites or having to download six different apps, compared to booking a flight ticket on one website in 10 minutes. Another issue is passenger rights. If your flight is cancelled, in some cases airlines can be obligated to even offer you a hotel room. If you miss your connecting train of a different operator and you have to spend the night at the station, your compensation is still having your phone and wallet on you when you wake up on the platform bench in the morning. A solution to this would be through tickets, meaning a journey of multiple operators considered as one single ticket. 
Few train companies offer through tickets today, writes the European Commission in the passenger rights proposal. And when railway companies only sell tickets for journey segments, not the whole trip, it allows them to bypass obligations related to compensation, rerouting and assistance. Huh, I wonder if countries supported the France, Germany and Spain were the main opponents of any obligation on railway companies to offer through tickets. The Council did not accept this under any circumstances, as they considered that the sector is not yet sufficiently prepared to issue through tickets. Hey, uh, you know what else we are not sufficiently prepared for? Climate change. Through tickets? But that would mean we'd have actual obligations towards passengers. We can't do that. People can drive instead, I guess. Gee, why is it so hot this summer? Anyway, on a lighter note, compared to the US, a great benefit of living in the EU is that large, systemic problems like this are actually being resolved. Gradually. However, the direction is more or less correct, usually, and the only question is the speed of implementation, i.e. funding and political will. So what is being done to fix the chronic problems of European international rail? The track gauge issue is mostly resolved, especially with the Rail Baltica project mentioned in the beginning, where a standard gauge high-speed double track will be built through the Baltics, with a potential future connection to Helsinki through a proposed undersea rail tunnel. I also suspect that countries like Ukraine and Moldova will make at least some effort to convert to standard gauge for obvious reasons. In terms of electrification, the main effort is converting DC systems to 25 kV AC. This involves individual main lines like the Brussels Luxembourg, which just got put back into operation, or entire country networks like the Czech Republic, set to completely switch all their 1800 km of DC lines to AC in the next two decades, with the first of these conversions already finished in June 2022. Otherwise, new lines, especially high speed lines, are usually built using 25 kV AC. The train control system issue, despite being a gigantic clusterfuck, is being solved through ERTMS, or European Rail Traffic Management System, which is supposed to unify the entire European network. It's slow, it's over budget, and France may or may not be sabotaging its implementation in an effort to hinder competition, but it's happening nonetheless. Whenever there is a major line reconstruction, for example, it usually gets switched to ERTMS. And this is important because it's just a plain better system. If you outfit a line with it, you're looking at a 10 to 20% capacity increase just by virtue of having a more efficient system. ERTMS has three levels, each having more function than the previous, to the point where level 2 and 3 basically mean self driving trains. As for user friendliness, like a unified ticketing system, I predict that the next few summers with their even more violent and deadly heat waves will reinvent great discussion. Hopefully. Maybe. Before it's uh, too late, you know? For now, I think the goal we should strive towards is this. Have every major city connected by standard gauge rail, that's easy. Every main line should be converted to 25 kV AC outside of Germany, Austria and Switzerland, because let's face it, they'll never do it. Have every main line operate on ERTMS, this is already partially happening, and give the same rights and ticketing services to rail passengers that airline passengers currently have. At that point, we'll have a neat, competitive international rail system on which we should run multiple units or trains with control cars, so the train can go both ways and doesn't need changing locomotives motives when changing directions. So basically either stuff like Debe's new double-decker ICs or the UBB's railjets. But the former is better, so let's have that. And then run those trains on major lines between 5 and 22 at minimum 1 hour intervals. So not like the Berlin-Prague line, where trains go every 2 hours, with the last one leaving at 1705. Come on, people. Seriously though, forget about conventional locomotive hull trains in intercity traffic, and just forget about them in general. Get multiple units, or at the very least push pulls. those are the trains with the control cars. And vote for politicians who are progressive on the rail issue, which is usually your local Green Party, or any other party not composed entirely of car-centric grandpas. And with that, I thank you for watching. This was my video on European International Rail. Lots of potential, lots of room to improve, God knows we need it, so let's hope for the best. Also, if you want to support me making this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. Link in the description, and I'll be seeing you next time.